Hey, welcome back to another episode to From Life for Living Wow. Before I dive into the topic this week, I quickly want to say if you do have one or two things that you'd like to know about the community of Life for Living Well, you can easily find this out on our website at www.lifeforlivingwell.com. I sincerely hope that you're well this week. So what are the topics that I have for us this week? So this week I'm presenting love as a healing. Many of us may not know that love himself can heal us from physical, emotional, and mental illness in a way that can drastically change our life. True great said, love is what time cannot. You will be surprised that you meet someone that they still raving, they still angry, concerning things that have happened to them many, many years ago. And you can meet someone that lost everything, but their love for life, the zeal for life, make it look like they are like a rock that you throw the water to and the water just splash. So how can we use love as a healing? or how healing derived from love. So this particular episode this week is engaging, is interesting, is what I will be exploring. So let's dive in. The topic is love as a healing. And this week we cover number one, how love as a healing can show up in our life. What causes some of the illnesses and not all the illnesses? Now we have the research to back it up that almost over 70% of the physical illnesses that we experience, that people experience, is actually come more from things that is avoidable if they can work on their nature. So, could we start thinking about self-healing as an alternative to current or supporting existing medical treatments? So, this is the area people talk about holistic treatment. The level of stress many people tolerate in their body end up creating so many physical illnesses that they experience. So what is the price of excessive anger? Has anyone done research about it? Yes, they've done it. What's the price of excessive worry? What's even the price of excessive resentment? How does it affect the person that kept resentment for many, many years in their systems, in their mind? Some people get so angry that they even talking self-talking loud that they are not aware that they are about to cross the road and unfortunately some people lost their life so it's like someone hurts you and you eat the poison in order for the person that hurts you to get hurt so it's you that actually going to get hurt or someone 
porter qu'à vanté depuis au son et faut dire son aussi so bad and you're so full of anger and all things you spend all your energy and time if you become more vindictive to the point that you really want to hurt that person you really want to revenge you really want that person to pay for their bad behavior what happened a chinese philosopher once said that before you revenge just remember that you need to dig to the grave because it's not only the person you're about to revenge you might end up hurting yourself at the same time research has shown that over 70 percent of physical illnesses relate to our stress and emotions so why people have no digging to this and bring what is practicable into their life one of the pioneers of medicine a great Greek physician and philosophers once said don't treat the man with the illness or get to know the person with sickness and it's true two things likely to happen if you prescribe medications the person illness could be chronic and likely to return but once you get to know the person a bit it is very challenging for medical professional in current time that we are for reason that have more to do with cost resources because you just imagine a surgeon that have four or two operations to do in a day she or he probably didn't have time to dive in spend one to one with his patient here to the operation enough to know the nature behavior attitude belief of the patient today if the patient think they cannot survive the operation many surgeons will not perform the operation so you also need this the patient to believe that they will be okay so well this philosopher recommended that the habit of knowing the person you're treating we serve both physician and we also support the patient care in the sense that you understand the nature of the person that they might not even need a medical a medication they might actually need behavioral change which is can be very very challenging that's why many people don't change or well, that's why many people find change difficult so by getting to know the person most likely you a well trusted story of the person onto things that shape their life attitude and belief and surprising surprising another way people can be naive is to believe that their actions are not congruent to the results they are experiencing so some people believe that their actions and behavior is actually nothing to do directly with the experience or results that they created from the action so take for example uh, if you believe in type a personality or type b personality or type d personality but well, actually there's an observational research that shows that people that fall into the group of type a personality are judged to be ambitious impatient sometimes 
Mustang aggressive and anger it turned to the passion for them that pushed them to confront things that actually probably would be better not to and a combination of the impatience and the anger that drove in them so they are driven and self-direct individual so and this also uh, is side effect and most of them are diagnosed or used to know in the medical life profession that they seem to suffer more from high blood pressure and hypertension and many more heart related diseases So they even look at the health effect of stress by studying elderly caregiver looking after their spouses. People who are naturally under a great deal of stress, it find that caregiver are the sister is an higher rate of death than people their age who are not caregivers. That it is really add to nurturing and look after someone that's sick for so long because you also absorb the low energy of sickness into your own life you probably not taking care of yourself as you will have done if they are healthy and well so if you spend so much so now there's a research that I've show and back up what most people already know about that most likely almost 60% of people just give care to the person that are really sick for so long in their life their own life also cut shorter as a result of that so let's now move to the second part of this podcast what about love as a healing power so we're talking about illnesses that are caused by different causes but we're looking to more into stress and our way of life but how can we use love as a healing as, as alternative to this love influences all aspects of human existence love loss is one of the most powerful form of stress and trauma you see when people when love breaks down in relationship of two people We have seen how it creates stress and trauma to some people. In some cases, it actually liberates some people. Especially if they have been suffering so long and their mind is already ready to let go. So it seems love is a single dose that reduces or neutralizes our stresses. And this not only has to be a romantic love can be love that you generate within and by yourself it can be love of your passion it can be love of your friendship it can be love of your family it can be things that you derive love from because when you love you also care and you not only just care you also care in a way that nurturing your deeper needs how do you develop and nurture this love which will start with you number one self love origin of love begin from you but sadly most people are lacking in this area it is not a coincidence that many are stuck in unnatural relationships both romantic and platonic which is adverse to your head And when this doesn't work in a way that it falls, it also causes a lot of problems. One of them is stress and trauma. 
and what will happen if you have stress and trauma consistently for a long time they become physical evidence through the inners inners by the time the inner show in person body it just is symptoms of what's already there an act of self-love will enforce a self-respect in return you will attract more good things into your life you do not attract what you want or who you are Number two, self-compassion. Learn to nurture your wound with care and kindness. Give yourself the best advice you will give your best friend when they are going through difficult times. And number three, these are the things that practical step you could take to turn or make love as a healing in your life. Number three, meditation. Noise is all around you. There's attractions every second. And hardly can you quiet your mind for a few seconds. There are well-established benefits in meditation and it's a good practice to embrace it into your daily life. For a few minutes, practice breathing meditation, which I find as most easiest of the meditation, especially when your time is very very tight, you could have the two minutes to just observe your breath for just few minutes. That alone could make you grounded for the whole day. There are a few more meditations available. Look for one that suits you best. Lastly, positive attitude. Your own attitude goes a long way. Henry Ford once said, if you think you can, and if you think you cannot, you are right. So don't waste your energy on things that you have no business on or you cannot change. Focus all your energy on things that you can really make a difference on. And it starts from you. It always starts from you. It is more important today than any other time in our history as people attention and focus constantly chip away. But embrace love into your life. It's a route to healing in many other areas of your life. I hope this podcast helps someone this week. Until we meet again next week, please stay safe. Ciao.